Yeah. Oh, so maybe I'm incorrect. Tell the system. I the place is Sorry. And it says excellent connection. So you know that they've connected, they're talking to each other. But it automatically pulls so in the last time, last stream, you have to We do always do it that way, but the question is why? Like I never knew why. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, okay. Also, I have. I didn't know if this was just. It's always hard for me to gauge what. Um, uh -huh. What made to go. Right? Yeah. 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 Pen, but, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then after this, we yeah. have that. Yeah. Yeah. You're this more than seven. Yes. We, yeah. I died. Just, okay. I just I didn't. We see can't it. really say. Like, uh, <clears throat> We're going to do that. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Mark's got one of the people. We have an executive staff. He's got everything going on. That's what it was. I know he's had a couple things going on. So we'll do this meeting. And then after this meeting, we'll do the special meeting. Don't get too excited. And then we'll go into it. So then you can do It's good that it's very informative. Yeah. I do have to remind him that. Me, how are you? Uh, good, how are you? This stream Don't here is that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. the cameras if you need. Hey, you want to Imagine time of year, then they reset and they turn it against the wall. Like, yeah, sure. Go ahead and plug it in, so too. Right. This is how you reset those uh, cameras. It doesn't work that way. You don't hardly ever use it. Only if it's Just a few more seconds. So basically, use it. Everybody, it's 6 o'clock. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Everyone will please join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first item on tonight's agenda is the approval of the agenda. Do I have anyone, any commissioners wish to add or take away from anything on tonight's agenda? Hearing none, we will move on to public comment. Is there anyone joining us this evening that would like to make public comment to something that is not on this evening's agenda? Please do so now. Please come up. Uh, please state your name and your address, please. Uh, thank you. My name is uh, James Dedimore. I live at 451 Cambridge Boulevard in Grand, uh, East Grand Rapids. And I was at my first meeting last uh, month, so I appreciate the time and the opportunity. But unfortunately, I didn't really research the meeting as well. So I talked a little bit about the bike trail work out at uh, Manhattan that you're looking into. But I got into this splash pad issue and looking at that, that a little bit closer this past month. So I've done some research and I uh, have some things that I'd like to pass to the city to utilize in the process of your risk evaluation. Uh, I spent uh, 10 years rotating monthly in and out of Africa working for a major oil company. Uh, one of the things I spent most of my time doing was making sure things didn't blow up or people didn't get hurt or killed. So I have an extensive background in that area. We did risk assessments, HAZOPs, you name it, safety reviews, et cetera. Uh, so I have a good background in that. What I did note uh, from hearing some of the people talk uh, last month about the uh, splash pad, it's not something you just jump into as a simple manner and have a, a vote and you have your three to two or whatever your thing turns out and you move forward with this. I think you need to look at it a little bit closer and I'll just read through some of the uh, information I've collected. So I uh, looked into some areas, Alton, Illinois, they installed a <coughs> splash pad within the last number of years. Uh, they are located right on the Mississippi River. So it's a kind of a big focus point in their city, which would be like our gaslight district. It's not away from, from the location like we have out in Manhattan Park. Uh, they spent something like $1.2 million on their splash pad. It's very nice looking when you look at, at it on Google Maps. And it includes a nature-themed discussion about the Mississippi River while you're down there. Uh, one of the things is it's open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, fortunately, at this point, I wasn't able to find any incidents associated with that, which is good for them, but they've just recently opened. So uh, it also gives you an idea of the type of hours. And then I talked to their neighbors that aren't too far away in Edwardsville, Illinois. Uh, they installed roughly around the same type of timing. <coughs> they installed a splash pad. Uh, it has a monitor person that's there during its entire operation during the day. 
they pay roughly $13 an hour right now. If they were located here, they'd probably be paying 15 or, or whatever the standard is, and I'm sure you're aware of the, the tight labor market that we have. So this one discusses a mother of a four-year-old filed a lawsuit against the city uh, and the architectural <coughs> firm claiming the, the child broke her leg uh, using the water slide and playing in the park at the uh, new splash pad location. Now, looking on Google Maps, they have their splash pad, and then they have a park system where you've got playground equipment. They're separated. In between, they have a concession stand area where they have concessions being sold, and of course, they have that monitor there uh, that's working, but they're separate. And where the problem occurred is when the splash pad participants go down to the playground area, they get the slides wet, and then that's what created the broken leg associated with it. So those are the type of things you need to think of. Uh, the next area is Little Elm, Texas. Little Elm is out in near Lake Louisville. That's just north of Dallas, Texas. It's a nice community, uh, upscale, kind of like uh, East Grand Rapids would be. Uh, here's an investigation. The outcome isn't uh, identified here, but investigation is underway after a three-year-old was found unresponsive to the at a splash pad in the Little Elm uh, Friday evening and then died at the hospital, police said. So one of the things in looking at Google Maps, it's very similar to our type of location where Manhattan Park is out away from the town. It's kind of the same thing. They've got a, a probably about pretty close to our 40 acres that they have. So uh, that's one incident there. Uh, the next one was in Bourne Water Park, which is in Bourne, Massachusetts. And that's just uh, across the border from Rhode Island, so it's in the southern end of the Boston area, where a two-year-old was injured at a slide on Buzzards Bay. And they had to take her and have her toe removed from uh, damage from that slide. And then there's an incident about uh, a Milford girl in Milford, Ohio. And this is a, kind of a little gruesome. Is she's at a uh, splash pad, and she was being accompanied with her friends. Her mother wasn't there with her at the time, uh, but a friend was chaperoning the uh, girls, a seven-year-old girl. And all of a sudden, she came screaming, uh, bloody murder hysterically out of the splash pad and uh, by the time they got her to the Cincinnati uh, location where the uh, children's uh, hospital was her clothes which was her bathing suit was uh, fully blood soaked and the little girl was hysterical as, as they said the two-hour operation had to take place where they uncovered a four centimeter long laceration and it was uh, millimeters away from her cervix. So it's a pretty serious situation in that regard. What they found in Ohio is that there's no laws or regulation regarding the water pressure coming out of these <coughs> splash pads. So she was uh, working with her mom and a group of individuals to try and get some of those regulations put in in Ohio. But uh, they just basically don't regulate water pressure, though they do regulate things like water quality. So that's another item for consideration. <clears throat> Mr. Demmer, could I interrupt you for just yeah. one moment? Um, so everything you brought with us tonight are a bunch of concerns and mm -hmm. some incidents you found mm -hmm. um, on the web. Just because we do like public comment to be for three minutes, okay. um, but this is very interesting information. Is there a way that well, you could can I somehow... jump just to the last one? Sure, that yeah. really reflects. And then, is there a way that you game. can share that with yeah, us? Yeah, I'm going to uh, give perfect. Each Thank you, folks. So. You can look okay. at them and, and Thank you. study them a little bit more. Okay, so <laughs> this is the interesting one I, I found. is In Palm Coast Park in Florida, uh, they installed a 10,000 square foot uh, splash pad. And this was quite a big deal. There's a lot of pictures, color pictures, covering all the ceremonies and opening it up and such. And it was also a $5.1 million project. Wow. And it's not that big when you look at it, really, on, uh, on the Google Maps. And the city approved it, and it was a three to two vote. So the two people later on that voted against it, they were talking about the fact that they were, you know, kind of maybe thought that they 
were a little overboard and maybe voting against it. Eleven months later, that park is completely closed. Uh, it basically opened barely weeks before failing twice, closing the second time in July of last year after it opened. Failure was caused the city to threaten a lawsuit against the contractors, and they go on and explain a lot of what's involved in that and the uh, costs associated with that. <clears throat> and just right now, just to get it back up and running would be another $600,000 to reinitiate re that. So I think what I'm trying to do is show that this isn't something that you guys should just sit and make a quick <coughs> vote on. You need to do your homework and your studies and your risk assessments ahead of time. Uh, look at this. There's more of these on the internet. I've actually left you something here too that talks about safety uh, standards for, for uh, splash pads. It's not really in depth is enough, but it does start where they talk about something like 20,000 injuries associated with splash pads, pools, water, uh, sports equipment like this. So it's uh, kind of similar to what I was once told when I used to uh, race bikes, is that when you're training, there are those who have fallen and those that will fall. And so I think in terms of the splash pad is you need to really have your ducks in line before you just arbitrarily make a decision on this without knowing what the risks are from some of the lawsuits that are involved uh, and some of the dollar figures that are in here to associate with us. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Was there anyone else joining us to make public comment on something that's not on this evening's agenda? Okay, hearing none, I will now close public comment and move on to report of mayor and city commissioners. And I will start on my left with Commissioner Schwartz. I have nothing today, thanks. Okay, Commissioner Arnhorst. Nothing to report, thanks. Commissioner Hamrick. So, um, <clears throat> I, we, we the, the commission, received a lot of emails from residents about par various park improvements, whether it was at Manhattan, um, well, everything at Manhattan plus the trail system, so two, two separate things. And um, we've heard from a lot of residents about um, the d various improvements and, um, and the changes that, that may, may happen. And um, I wanted to sort of highlight the supporters supportive voices because we have heard a lot of people who are opposed to certain things but we haven't really heard from the supporters so I think it's important to, to highlight that and I want to take this opportunity to read a, uh, an email that we all received from a resident that lives on Manhattan Road her name is Jill Dean 668 Manhattan Road and she can, she covers this very nicely um, because she talks about um, multiple projects. She's not really just zooming in on one thing. Um, she, she states, I live at 668 Manhattan Road Southeast. I have six grandchildren under seven that are East Grand Rapids residents that I watch two afternoons a week. I want improvements at Manhattan Park. I would love this splash pad. My neighbors complain about diapers potentially being left around a splash pad. I used to seethe when I saw all the dog poo bags thrown into the woods at Manhattan and Reeds Lake Boulevard, and yet when the city put a garbage can on the corner, this problem seemed to go away. I think lots of maintained, not overflowing garbage cans would help potential debris around a splash pad too. I would like better maintained hiking trails in the woods. The current ones can be muddy and unusable because of deadfall, deadfalls. My 12-year-old Dashund loves to hike, but, but is not tall enough to jump over limbs. I asked a friend that mount, whether mountain bikes, if, I'm sorry, I'm trying to start over. I asked a friend that mountain bikes, if bikers and hikers can coexist, and she assured me it's very normal to do so. I never see anyone playing beach volleyball, but I always see kids at the play, uh, on the play equipment. Can we get better, more fun play structures? Which we will be. Um, I'm sure there are many vi variations of playgrounds out there. We could use an upgrade. <coughs> I think the current four volleyball courts are excessive, so that's fair. I love to see people using the park. I love to see groups in the pavilion. Um, I know on Saturdays the parking is a problem during soccer seasons, but that's the price to pay to live near a park. Please make this park better. Thank you. So I just wanted to highlight that because we don't, we're not hearing from all the people who actually support the projects. Mm -hmm. 
and I appreciated what she had to say. So I think it's it's good to, to hear that too. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Pakla? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. I wanted to congratulate the EGR High School girls track team, uh, who are the 2022 Michigan State champions for the first time ever. Very yeah. proud of that team. That's so amazing. They fought very hard cool. uh, at the local competition <coughs> here in Forest Hills. So. They sure did. Yeah. yeah, that's very good. Thanks for mentioning that. Anything else? No. Commissioner Wesley? Hi. hi. Uh, so I wanted to, um, to extend uh, an appreciation to the city manager, uh, Shea Charles, and Chief Mark Harold, uh, for taking the time on May 19th to help me better understand the national guidelines on use of force in response to resistance. Um, Further, I'd like to also thank Chief uh, for pushing me uh, to do a ride along. Also, uh, shout out to uh, Staff uh, Sergeant Eric Smith and Public Safety Officer David um, Hollis for accommodating me to. Uh, do that ride along during uh, the officer's shift. Um, although luckily uneventful, uh, my inner child had a lot of fun. <laughs> and it was a great way for us to uh, really have a one-on-one -on -one chat. Uh, you know, we covered topics from ranging from our job roles initially and then down to our personal lives by the time that it, was, it was done. So it was a great way to, to meet um, uh, a staff member here uh, who works really hard for the city. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Great. Commissioner Wesley, how long was your ride along? So it was only about, about an hour, maybe, I'd an say. I, sp I spent uh, another hour before getting in the uh, vehicle, t you know, chatting with uh, Staff uh, Sergeant uh, Smith and, uh, and just kind of going over um, just their daily routine and, and, you know, and we tied a good conversation about tasers and nice. so we went on some good tangents. Uh, but then, yeah, the ride along was, um, again, fairly uneventful, but it was a good right. chance for us to just drive around and talk. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, I want to, you know, just encourage anyone that wants to do a ride along. I know that our public safety department is very <coughs> um, open and accommodating about that for residents, commissioners, anyone who wants to learn more about public safety. So thanks for bringing that yeah, up. Thanks. I'd pre yeah, I suggest to do that. And I think um, it could be as, as short as, or as long as you want it to be. I think it, uh, they're very accommodating. So uh, thanks. Cool. Just to chime in on that, I, I forgot to mention that, but I also did a ride along about a week and a half ago um, with Officer Bradley. and. Um, very similar experience. Uh, got, got to know uh, the department, their policies. Um, got to know uh, the officer personally, and it was it was a really good experience. Great, wonderful. Well, I have nothing to add. So, Mr. Okay. Charles. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, go back to my notes. <laughs> um, just a reminder: our next engagement session is uh, next Monday, the thirteenth, at six o'clock here in Commission Chambers. Um, we will bring back um, the trails and a couple other things, so we'll look for notices and we'll start pushing um, advertisement on that shortly. Um, update on the bike, bike mobility action plan. Um, commission authorized proceeding with uh, the demonstration project that's been deployed about a month and a half, two months now. Um, just maybe around a month. Around around a month. Um, we are getting, but for moving one sign uh, that resonates that we moved a little bit, we've gotten no feedback. Um, if commission is amenable, um, we would like to go ahead and start moving forward with full implementation of the plan. Um, mm -hmm. We've got the funds budgeted and we're ready uh, to do that. So um, um, if commission would like me to bring that back and do a formal action, that's fine. Or if everybody's fine with us just going forward. Um, Okay, um, we'll do that. Um, speaking of splash pad and multi-use trail, um, we are um, we finalized the um, multi-use trail FAQ that's um, got published or is about to be published is online now, um, and then the splash pad FAQ will be out there. Um, a lot of the um, issues that our resident joined us with this evening, I think, will help address some of those kind of what we're doing, how we're approaching it, things of that nature. Um, so that is um, coming um, very quickly. Um, two, two other things. One, um, uh, nice job to public safety today. We actually had a real life water rescue. Uh, we had a canoe tip over uh, down by Roses. Uh, three individuals, two were able to get their life vest off. Uh, the third one was not, um, and actually our bike patrol called it in. So um, we got to um, watch them do their thing with that. And then finally, I um, want to welcome Lori Parmenter, um, our hopefully soon to be new clerk. Um, there's action later on in this agenda, and her husband, Mike, um, who's in the audience this evening. So she had a chance to come up today and start to get acclimated. She will start formally on the 13th. Wonderful. Yeah, welcome, and welcome, yeah. both of you. I had one quick question about the engagement session. So the next one's on the 13th. Yes. And then is there one after that? The last one is the 20th. The 20th, that's yep. what I thought. 27th. 27th, that's right, because we'll have a commission meeting on the 20th. Right. Okay, 27th. 
Um, thank you. And then also to that FAQ, just a comment, I had a chance to look that over before the commission meeting. <coughs> you said it is online? Correct. Um, thank you for your hard work with that. It's very thorough and very, um, I think it covers a lot of information. So thank you for that. Yep. Um, I will say that we will start to push that out via social media and you know, mm -hmm. it's not just buried on our website. We'll start to get uh, uh, stuff out there. And it's, we can do that too. We can, so. we can share that on our social media as well. So good reminder. Thank you. So now we will move on to the regular agenda items. Uh, agenda item number five is a public hearing on general fund budget and the property tax levy for fiscal year 2022-23 <coughs> and introduction by Mr. Charles. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So uh, pursuant to uh, General Budgeting Act um, and state constitution, this is um, our annual budget hearing, um, which we will discuss uh, the proposed tax levy. We are proposing a tax levy of 11.5214, um, which will generate uh, just over $9.7 million in operating revenue. Uh, this is down from our previous um, military trade, 11.975. Um, yeah. So, um, and then uh, also our street and sidewalk millage at uh, one one point seven five six seven, uh, mm -hmm. generating just under one point five million um, for that those efforts. Um, the resolution that is later on um, approving that um, will also establish our uh, debt millages for the uh, community center as well as the um, parks improvement millage. So, um, with that, um, we're ready to hold the hearing. If there's not any questions. Yeah. Were there any questions for Mr. Charles? Okay. Okay. Um, is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak to this agenda item? No? Okay. And no further questions, so thank you. So hearing is closed. So. Hearing is closed. Thank you. Oh, my goodness sakes. Agenda oh. <laughs> 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 number seven. It's off. I don't, it's literally I off. <laughs> Okay, the next agenda <laughs> item is the public hearing and request to place the special assessment role of delinquent accounts on the upcoming tax roll. And that is introduction uh, by Ms. Seed. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so we do this annually and it's part of our city charter, city charter to roll any past due water bills as of January 31st to the tax roll. We send out numerous letters um, and give them time to pay before we roll it to the tax roll and then we uh, then we'll roll it and that will just be part of their taxes. Any questions? Are there any questions from the Heath about this? I just a quick question. I noticed that the number from FY 2021 to FY 21 22 is significantly higher. Do we know of any reason for that? Is that just yes. sort of we changed the charter last ordinance. Yeah. Ordinance. Or, ordinance. We changed the whole city charter. <laughs> <laughs> Very ambitious. We changed the ordinance. It used to only take the past dues until October, but by the time <clears throat> we roll it to the tax, they're already almost nine months. So we yeah. moved it to now January 31st. So there's an additional couple of months in there where we wouldn't have captured that before just to try to keep people up to date on their, their payments. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. Um, is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak to this agenda item? Okay, hearing none, I will mo move for a motion and a second on this agenda item. Move to certify the attached list of delinquent accounts receivable and authorize placement of these accounts on the July 21st, 20, or July 1st, 2022 tax roll. Second. Wonderful, is there any further discussion among commissioners? No? Okay, then we will go to a vote. All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? Oh, motion carries. Uh, next item on tonight's agenda is the introduction of an ordinance to amend section 3.130 of chapter 35 of title three of the city code pertaining to the Parks and Recreation Commission. That is introduction again by Mr. Charles. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as our per periodic review of uh, sort sorted ordinances and whatnot, we certainly came across, unlike our other commissions, planning commission, um, um, ZBA, there was no uh, residency requirement for the Parks and Recreation Commission. Mm -hmm. We have, um, some theories on why it kind of evolved that way um, and whatnot, but we're proposing to go ahead and just clarify um, that um, um, you have to be a resident uh, to be on our Parks and Recreation Commission. 
I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, was that is that the only commission that didn't have that? Every every yeah. one else, yeah. but 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 for, for this one, yeah. Okay, <coughs> wonderful. Uh, were there any other questions? I have one just clarifying question. So, if uh, when we say that all members have to be residents, but then we also have the statement that says one member is going to, may, shall be a school board member. There are school board members that could live outside of the city of East Grand Rapids. Is that in conflict at all? Uh, I don't think so because of the fact that they would be appointed by the school board. Okay. And we, we don't control that. Okay. So I think we're all right on that. Okay, great. Were there any other questions? Um, yeah, just one clarification. I did, just reading the actual language in response to Mr. Huff's statement, it, it seems like there are, there are the section starts with three sentences. One says, the commission shall consist of nine members, all of whom should be residents of the city. And it says one member shall be a school board member nominated by the school board. The remaining eight members shall be appointed by the mayor with the approval of the city commission. If we want to exclude that school board member from the residency requirement, should we move the residents of the city requirement to the sentence about the commission appointing eight members? Or is that still not extract? I mean, if you'd prefer to do that, I don't have any objection to that. I think that would be clear. I, I don't know if it matters to me one way or another. I just want to want to clarify what we're talking about mm -hmm. it seems to me that would be more clear are you waiting to talk to Mr. Ruff? yeah okay seems to be having a sidebar okay. yeah we have a sidebar over here okay. are we comfortable with that change or is it um the suggestion is <laughs> that there have been events in the past history of the city where uh, a former recreation director uh, informed the schools that they could not appoint someone who was not a resident of the city. So then maybe we want to leave it as is and, and say that the school board member has to be a resident of the city as well. Yeah. I just, I remember it happening where we had this discussion. Was it this, was it this one or okay. was it this one? <laughs> <laughs> You know, she played the fifth. Yes, she so, did. Um, yeah, then I think perhaps we should leave it the way that it stands. Okay. 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 That's fine. Okay. Is it fine? Okay. Um, is there anyone joining us this evening that would like to speak to this agenda item? Okay, hearing none, I will move forward for a motion and a second on this agenda item. Seven? I'll move to uh, approve the ordinance amendment to section 3.130 of chapter 35 of title 3 of the city code to clarify the requirements for the Park commission support um, and if, if i could clarify that was in an introduction oh okay so, so are, oh it are, is are you're right but it does ask okay. for a vote well, i'll move to introduce that then Inter <laughs> i support the introduction <laughs> so, <moved. laughs> okay, so we will not go for a vote on that okay uh, the next agenda item no, is... No, you still have to have a We need a vote. Yeah. Oh, we do. Because you still have to introduce it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Motion second. Okay. All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? The introduction carries. So uh, re next item is the resolution regarding climate action goals. Um, and that is an introduction by Mr. Charles again. Uh, again, thank you, Mayor. Mayor. Um, so what we have before you this evening, uh, the E-Green Sustainability Initiative Advisory Committee. Um, you guys need more acronyms, um, <laughs> that um, has um, had actually approached the city a few months ago in regards to uh, adopting a resolution in regards to uh, uh, carbon, neutral, carbon neutrality action goals or cli uh, climate action goals. Um, they did provide a draft resolution. Um, I also included the city of Rockford. Um, what I'm seeking this evening is some feedback from commission and direction in regards to is this something you would like uh, the staff to start working on um, proposing that probably run a pass fi finance committee and infrastructure and then bring it back um, for city formal city commission action uh, but um, I know the, um, um, the group is really anxious for us to get going on this um, from a staff perspective timing and whatnot um, we have capacity to be able to delve in, into this a little bit better than we were earlier this year so uh, Looking for um, basically looking for, looking for uh, direction. Um, right, on this. Um, are there any questions for Mr. Charles regarding this plan? And um, Mr. Commissioner Pakla, you had some questions, or I don't have any questions. I have some comments as we're sort of you know, okay when we discuss. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Um, 
There's no hearing required, but is there anyone that is here this evening that would like to speak to this agenda item? You could please uh, keep your comments to three minutes and state your name and address, please. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I'm John Kronowski. I'm <coughs> president of East Grand Rapids for 40 years. Um, I'm here to talk just a little bit about the history of the E-Green Sustainability Initiative. Uh, in January of 2020, I met with Mayor Favalli to discuss the possibility of creating a sustainability committee for the city of East Grand Rapids. And we both agreed about the importance and the need for this type of committee. So on uh, July 20th of that year, we convened our first meeting. And within two months, we had come up with a mission statement and bylaws to guide this organization. And since this humble beginning, the committee launched the E-Green Sustainability Initiative, and in which we think we have amassed a number of accomplishments so far. One being we have a Facebook page since November of 2020. We have over 400 followers now. Uh, we created a logo for our E-Green Initiative. Uh, we've had a series of recycling events. The first one being in May of 2021, we did styrofoam, and then in October of 2021, we did styrofoam again. Then this past January, we branched out and did styrofoam and e-waste. And then last month, we did again, we did uh, styrofoam and e-waste. And we've had excellent response by people in the community, and people are always asking us, when are you going to do it again? When are you going to do it again? We also uh, took part in the Mayor's Grand <clears throat> River cleanup last September. This was done in conjunction with Colebrook Creek Community, who watches over the Reese Lake watershed. And also, we had an Earth Day celebration in April, on April 23rd in Manhattan Park, where we had a second cleanup, and also uh, we had some information booths. So this leads us to our most recent venture right now in having this proclamation for climate action goals to be recommended for adoption by the city commission. E-Green strongly feels our community is on the cusp of experiencing a resurgence of stewardship and sustainability practices. And there's no reason that we can't have every day can't be Earth Day in East Grand Rapids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. State your name and address, please. Hello, my name is Brad Hunter, 2252 Hall Street, and a 16-year uh, resident of East Grand Rapids. Um, I've been participating in eGreen since its inception, uh, both from a planning and event volunteering level. Uh, it's been a rewarding time being active in, in the community in a new way, uh, getting to know other like-minded residents, interacting with uh, EGRPS uh, personnel and staff and, and city leaders and other constituent groups. Uh, thank, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to you. Um, the mission of the group uh, has been largely advocacy, even though you know John talks about some of the events we've done. We've felt a strong sense of adv advocacy to the greater community. Uh, promoting these activities um, aligns with the community's values and the global call for sustainability. Uh, quickly, as a financial planner, I, I speak to my clients all the time about generational wealth transfer, and it just dawned on me as I was creating uh, the words here for tonight um, that you know we're entrusted to pass along our, our resources from an environmental standpoint as well. So, um, you know, I, when it comes to the air, the land, plants, and other living things, these are our future. So, you know, we should um, look at the sustainability uh, proclamation seriously. So when we think of this community, uh, it's pretty easy to see what the values are from, from east. Anytime you go up and down lakeside or wealthy, um, it's coming from the lakeshore community of Holland. Um, you know, the environment's always been a priority. So this, um, you know, it's easily visible here in EGR to adopt 
such a proclamation as well. Um, so the opportunity we have is, is to protect and become good stewards of the resources. Uh, it's a great time to be um, talking about this with the EGR Commission and taking action to commit to carbon neutrality. And so, um, you know, one thing that's been apparent to us in, in coming onto this, uh, you know, committee, committee has been all the work that's been done by East um, in the past without, without our committee. So um, it's not as if these are anything new that we're doing, um, but, you know, allowing us to present to you this evening's uh, uh, comes with a lot of gratitude, so we uh, look forward to continuing the conversation around carbon neutrality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're almost done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fred and John. I'm Tom Tilma, 1635 Hall Street Southeast. Uh, I was connected to this committee early on by Mayor Favali. I noticed from the very beginning um, this concern about trying to influence policy. These events and activities where we do direct cleanups and things are wonderful, they're a lot of fun and are making an impact, but the idea of affecting policy and having a broader um, impact that way has always been part of the committee's uh, mission. Uh, the idea of a climate resolution has been talked about from the very beginning and it's very exciting to see it uh, being discussed by the city. We really appreciate the seriousness with which uh, staff has been taking uh, all of our many communications uh, to them about this. Uh, Brad talked about leadership. Uh, there are about 15 communities now in Michigan, townships, cities, and counties that have adopted a resolution of this type. Um, we, you know, I, among many people, feel that uh, East Grand Rapids is the kind of community that should be a leader in this kind of thing. Uh, these resolutions typically have a target date for climate or for carbon neutrality. Uh, we propose 2035 community-wide. <coughs> it's 13 years from now. We think that is achievable in a community of this size. Things are start going to be ramping up in this whole arena quickly. You can see how electric vehicles are just exploding, right? And things can change. There can be tipping points. Uh, the state of Michigan and Rockford have a 2050 goal. We think that's just too far out. On the other hand, Ann Arbor has a 2030 goal of carbon neutrality, not just for city operations, but for the community as a whole. That, that's one of the more ambitious ones in the United States. <coughs> the city of Grand Rapids, our worthy neighbor, has 2035, but it's just for city operations. They are really moving fast on that goal. They, they will soon be talking about community-wide goals rather than just their own operations. These resolutions also typically call for a plan to help guide this process, this carbon neutral goal. Uh, we propose the plan be completed within a year. We think these things are urgent. It wouldn't spell out everything, but it would be more of a framework plan. Uh, typically, there's a baseline that's developed. What is your carbon dioxide emission baseline? That would be the first thing that would be in such a plan. Rockford, we've been following them closely. We've shared the information with with the city manager. <coughs> I think uh, the city manager has reached out to the city of Rockford. They have obtained a grant from the State Department of Eagle, and they are funding a $15,000 framework <coughs> plan with that grant. <coughs> we understand that that program in Lansing is looking for additional communities to seek this funding. The consultant that's been retained by the city of Rockford is Ann Earhart with Public Sector Consultants. Many of you may be familiar with that operation in Lansing. It's a very well-regarded consultancy in Lansing that works in the area of public policy, public sector consultants. Ann Earhart is from this area and has a proven track record of sustainability consulting. That's a recommendation from us. There may be other funding, such as from the Federal Infrastructure Bill. And that is all I have for this evening. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to this? Okay. So I will bring this up here for a motion and second and discussion. So. Oh, sorry, just, we're, just to clarify, we're moving to just to, speak just to, to, yeah, we're, to yeah, we're going to have a motion staff, second, then we're going to talk. Yeah, to direct staff to yeah. um, uh, develop a um, appropriate resolution. But we're going to discuss it before we go to a vote. Oh, gotcha. So, okay. So, just a motion. Okay. 
I'll, I'll motion. I'll, I'll go, go ahead. ahead. Yes. Okay, I'll, 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 <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, we provide uh, feedback and direction for the resolution on climate action goals. And I'll second. Okay. Okay, did anyone want to start? The, you said you had some comments. Commissioner yeah, Hacker. I defer to Commissioner Wesley making the motion if you'd like to speak first. Well, yeah, I just, I think it's, well, first of all, a gr great idea, and I like the, you know, I'm, uh, uh, I think it's an interesting time that we, it's brought up that we can, we can do actually, you know, potentially change some legislation here. I had some questions, though, about just looking through this a bit, just looking at the, pro pro uh, the projected, uh, you know, goal of 2035 of being citywide, a citywide goal, is that, when we say citywide, is that, is that just within the like the city, the municipality, or are we talking about residents and homes? And are we going like? And how do we? I guess I'm fairly new, so I'm just yeah. curious. Of how do we? And, and that's part of the reason um, for the referral to uh, direct staff to develop this, and we'll flush out all those type of questions of Are you looking at city operations? What are the? Um, um, what influences are? What can we do in regards to the city as a whole? And things of that nature. Um, as what's noted by the group earlier, a lot of um, Baseline things the city does already. I mean, this is a lead certified building. Um, we, when we do look at updating our infrastructure, whether it be um, boilers, HVAC, simple things like making sure we're getting the highest efficiency that we can, things of that nature, and making those extra investments. Um, yes, it costs us a little, probably a little bit more to get the you know the most efficient, but a lot of that is just stuff that's ingrained naturally in our operation. Um, mm -hmm. So, but as we talk through and your to your <coughs> baseline question of what do we mean exactly? That's something that we'll flush out um, when we bring back the final resolution for our commission, and we'll have all those type of answers, gotcha. um, questions Perfect. answered. Oh. So. I'm, I'm just, yeah, you know, I'm excited about it. So this is great. Thanks. Okay. Great. Okay. Anybody else? I'd just like to thank E Green for taking the initiative to get this off the ground. This is it's such a great cause, and it's really awesome when our residents do something like this and, and identify something that is a need and a pressing need time wise, and then. Um, you know, move to bring it to our attention and, and fill this. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. Yeah, I agree. We can't do it uh, quickly enough. So thank you. Yeah, and I appreciate the group's, you know, sort of here and now focus of running events while also thinking about that policy piece that we heard about, right? The, the sort of long-term action of creating policy shifts in the city um, is, is I think the, the goal that we all have to think about. We talked about it in our uh, strategic planning session that we want this notion of environmentalism and sustainability and stewardship to be part of all of our operations, right? We, we, we felt that so strongly that we didn't even want it to be a separate thing. We wanted it to be embedded in everything, right? And the way that we do that is by thinking about the high level policy conversations. I think we have a lot going for us as a city to be able to um, have this kind of proclamation not just be words on a on a paper as well, right? We're a very nimble organization. We already have a culture of piloting. We have a culture of looking at all facets of our operations to determine whether or not things are appropriate. And I think carrying through that to carbon neutrality and climate change um, is is just a, a very reasonable and absolutely necessary next step. I think it comes as a shock to nobody that I'm strongly in favor of this sort of <laughs> proclamation. Um, so I'm really excited about it. I really hope that we use the strongest language that we possibly can when we're thinking about this resolution. So sort of as this guidance, you know, there there isn't gray area when we when it comes to climate change. Yeah. It it is happening. It is anthropogenic. It is happening because of us. Um, and we have to be addressing it in a way that's really gonna make meaningful change. Um, so thinking about the, strong, the strength of the language, um, using maize where we can and using wills and, uh, and other similar language where we need to. Um, but I do wanna also be reasonable uh, as it relates to thinking, or not reasonable, but I wanna be attentive to thinking about city staff capacity. I'm really pleased to hear that we, th we have the capacity now to be able to do this. I know that was really a, a point that we were, were pausing on previously, so I'm very glad about that. Um, and uh, yeah, just I'm really excited for it. I'm really excited to think about these pilots too. We've talked about with with Public Works uh, and Finance Committee about opportunities for piloting electric vehicles for city operations. Um, I think that all sort of falls out of our pathway here with the proclamation. It's nice to have boundaries around that from the policy side of things as well. Any other comments or discussions? I don't know that there's anything left to say. It's all been said so, so well and covered all the bases. Thank you again to the EGR Green Group. Um, it's just it's been such a great um, 
committee, and um, I'm so glad that everybody's put together. I know there's been a lot of um, interest in even so many other members joining. So thank you to all of you for um, your diligence and uh, for what you do and for bringing this forward. So we appreciate it. Okay, if there's no further discussion, then uh, we will go to a vote. All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Motion carries. <clears throat> We will move on to the next agenda item. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we've never gotten the applause. It's been a while. Thank you. <laughs> so the next agenda item is the uh, radar speed feedback sign pilot project for Plymouth Road. And that's introduction by Mr. Lefebvre. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor and City Commissioners. Uh, this evening we have an action request uh, for a pilot pro uh, pilot project kind of in conjunction with what we, we do have in place in terms of a permanent radar speed feedback sign. Um, going back a little bit of history with the Blodgett Hospital project, uh, which actually been underway I think in 2018, the initial phase, um, if not late 2017. So it's been going on for a while. Um, and with that, there's obviously been a disproportionate impact in traffic because the the um, ingress and egress points of the hospital has all been off of Plymouth uh, uh, Road. And I know that you all have been engaged with some of the residents uh, in that particular area. Um, so with, with that being the case, the, the other entryway um, uh, for the hospital, which will be off of Wealthy, um, that will not be... Um, part of the uh, new traffic flow until uh, we anticipate spring of this next year. Okay. So in the meantime, uh, we, we have done uh, a few studies in the area and we did see um, uh, some speeds that were a bit higher than what we'd like to see for southbound traffic there between Robinson Road and Wealthy. And with uh, some other potential traffic calming projects we have um, uh, that we'll be working forward with with various streets, neighborhoods, uh, we do have uh, a permanent re radar speed feedback sign that we could deploy um, in this next year, as I noted in the memorandum. So uh, what, we'd, what we would like to do uh, in the interim until we get to that phase where we have more normalized, and I say normalized what the new normal will be, um, we'd like to be able to install one of those uh, signs to help mitigate some of the impacts of traffic in that particular area. Um, and, and as I noted here too, I did include um, the uh, one of the conditions of the approval for, as a reminder, just to everybody, uh, just because we have some new faces here in the City Commission too, with the conclusion of the of the uh, the hospital construction project, that traffic consultants have to come back in and and look at what the analysis was and what we're actually seeing, and, and, and Spectrum Health would be um, required to to make any sort of improvements to make sure that we stay at the level of service that existed um, beforehand or better. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody may have this evening. Are there any questions for Mr. Lefebvre? Mr. Lefebvre, do we have a general idea of where this um, RSFS might be placed uh, on that stretch? Yep, yeah, it's it's close to a mid midpoint stretch, and so we have to look at a few factors. Uh, generally, these types of signs are located. We try to locate them so we don't have visibility issues in terms of adjacent residents. So they're typically along property lines. Um, we have used uh, solar signs too, so we have to look for, sure. make sure right. we have some, Sun. some sunshine. <laughs> um, so those are kind of the, the primary driving factors. Um, the midpoint there um, coming down the hill is, is where we were seeing kind of that that kind of um, apex with the speeds at 32 miles per hour, as I noted here, which again is not terrible. It's kind of borderline, but um, again, since we have one of those in stock, uh, we feel like it'd be um, something that we could do, at least in the short term, to help mitigate the ongoing impacts that are, that are certainly being felt in that area. And then do I, thank you for that. Um, and then do I recall that there's a conversation about turning on red at that light relative to Grand Rapids? City of Grand Rapids is doing some study or they're making some shifts in their service, is that right? Correct. Right, so in terms of all of our intersections, which we've got six signalized intersections in East Grand Rapids, um, the last time we, as a city, looked at um, those, and it was primarily driven by, um, by school traffic, uh, pedestrian traffic, um, that's something that um, <coughs> we certainly uh, intend on taking a look at. Um, there's a couple ways to look at that in terms of no, no turn on red at all sure. or no turn on red primarily during your daytime hours uh, so that people you know, in the late evenings or middle of the night aren't stopped um, yeah. 
waiting for maybe some not to be there. Um, so I think that's that's something that we'll bring forward to uh, to the city commission to consider. Certainly with that area, with the pedestrian traffic, with the hospital. Right. Um, um, it, as you recall from our last meeting, um, Spectrum Health partnered with us for some improvements we have underway for pedestrian safety in the area, but that is absolutely an area where we want to look at it kind of citywide. Yeah, great, thank you. So, so um, Mr. LaFave, this action request is to consider the temporary pilot approval of this um, radar sign through the end of the construction project, which is estimated in spring 2023. Can you fill in a little bit if what then the course of action from that point forward would be with the intent be to then remove the sign so Spectrum can do this level of service study and then consider, based on that study, putting in a permanent sign or something else? Yeah, I think what, we, what we'd like to do is, um, in the in the meantime, nothing is working the way it would, you know, it hasn't been anyway, um, for, you know, because of the construction project and be, because of those the multiple variables around access points, et cetera. Uh, what we would want to do is remove it um, when the construction is completed so that the post, uh, the post analysis is not biased. These signs bias behavior, which is generally a good thing. Uh, but what we want to be able to do is uh, to, to see, make sure that there's kind of an unbiased approach to what is happening um, in terms of traffic um, in this area from you know wealthy and Plymouth primarily um, and then I think from there um, certainly if uh, subsequent studies whether it's triggered by this in, by the initial comprehensive study traffic impact study that will will have conducted by um, spectrum health and reviewed by our traffic engineers um, certainly if it would qualify in the future for speeding in, in terms of our policy that's something that we could install on a permanent basis okay thanks I got a few questions um, <clears throat> Does it, does your, uh, the RSFS record speeds or is it just something more, more of a traffic calmer just to let the person know in real time the track of the speed that they're going? No, they do record speeds too. So, so we can check in, we can check in with, uh, with those devices and we can download uh, via Bluetooth to see what the results are. I can tell you from the two that we have in the city, um, I think that's probably why we haven't heard any complaints in those particular areas. Uh, there's one coming into East Grand Rapids for westbound traffic near Kelvin College. Um, that's been an area where we've had um, concerns for a number of years with that installation. We've seen, now we've seen for the, um, the other, the outbound traffic, the eastbound traffic, it still remains similar to what we've seen in previous studies because mm -hmm. we don't just use the radar speed feedback signs data. We use our official data we go off is our, our tube studies, mm -hmm. uh, those, the black tubes that go across the road. But we have seen uh, a decrease. I think um, the, it's, it's generally about four miles per hour slower coming in, um, and it certainly keeps us at that. Uh, point of below 30 where, where, where we want to be so um, that's been very successful also um, near the near the hospital therefore eastbound traffic um, uh, near Laurel on, on wealthy that was another location that we did an installation based off of traffic studies and again we've seen favorable results there I think I think that one was three miles per hour less if I, if I recall correctly from the last time um, we checked in so they seem to be effective um, we're, we're we're not necessarily getting positive feedback from residents, but we're not hearing uh, the concerns expressed um, mm. going forward. So I think a combination of that sort of reminder to motorists, but also it helps, I think, um, for pedestrians and neighbors in the area too to be, to be able to check in themselves and kind of just see what's happening, I think it's very helpful. Yeah, that's great. I, I mean, I'm just, I've been seeing a lot of chatter on, on Facebook, so nothing really officially sent to me, but a lot about a lot of, you know, the speeders and what are we doing about it. So it sounds like it's a great, it's a great way down only to to test and see but also to help deter speeders um so i'm i'm a, I'm a fan of it and it sounds like yeah it's, it's just costs nothing for us to because we have these in stock essentially we have a couple yep and we, oh. we we have a few that so based off of you know um i guess to your point based off of you know if residents contact us we can work with them <laughs> um so hopefully they're not just on social media but they reach out to to um to the city because we do do studies and and based <clears throat> off of those studies and results that's where we we look at deploying a variety of different traffic calming concepts and and the mitigation techniques that's perfect because that was my actually max thoughts to how, you know to, to employ that they do contact and that that's the path to go right because that's, that's how you know absolutely we want to we want to measure it in a scientific way and then and then based off of those results um, sometimes it can be a perception um, issue but um, you know Oftentimes, we've we've determined that there are different mitigation techniques or devices that we can deploy on a more permanent basis or semi-permanent basis to help 
lower those speeds, and then we, we like to study those afterwards, too, to see what those impacts are. That's great. And then my last question is just, uh, is there something special about this, or does, uh, about this, um, this ask, or is it, uh, is it every time that you, they want to deploy? So, these, any, so, need so anytime, um, so anyway, we, anytime we do move forward with a traffic calming device, it will come to commission for consideration. Oh, okay. um, this is a little unique because it's a pilot project, and we recognize it's going to be temporary versus our location on um, Lake Street and Wealthy Street, those were, Yes, we know I have an issue. We're deploying this. And then, again, to Mr. LaFay's point, following up with studies, to, is this working or not? Mm -hmm. So what's unique about this is, is it's a temporary measure. Um, and we, uh, we have the intention of removing it once Blodgett is fully open and then see what's going on. Right. Okay. It's part of our traffic calming overarching uh, policy guidelines. Um, the Department of Public Safety deploys the trailer units, right? You know, on a temporary, a very temporary, temporary basis. basis. <laughs> um, but but you know, those are going to be there for like a week, and and they would need to be moved. And certainly, when you're talking about winter maintenance operations and stuff like that, too, they, they, they can't be there. So this this will be a um, uh, a temporary pilot, but much longer than what we you'd see from a typical deployment, obviously, of a of a speed trailer. Great. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Any other questions from Mr. Lafay? Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so could we, uh, could I please have a motion and a second on this agenda item number nine? I'll move, okay. I would like to <laughs> I'll move that we temporary, uh, uh, for the temporary pilot approval for the RSF, RSFS, the southbound um, Plymouth Road between Robinson Road and Multi Street through the compilation um, uh, of the Blodgett Hospital construction project, project and estimated to be completed in spring of 2023. I'll support that. Wonderful. Is there any further discussion on this agenda item? No? Okay. Um, then we'll go to a vote. All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is the appointment of city clerk, and that's introduction by Mr. Charles. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it's my pleasure, as I did earlier, and introduce, reintroduce, I guess now, mm -hmm. uh, Lori Parmenter. She's coming to us from the city of Hastings. Uh, she's currently the deputy city clerk there. Uh, started 15, 16 years ago? Uh, almost 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Um, has, um, various, has had various roles with um, uh, the city of Hastings, so we're excited to um, bring, recommend bringing her on board. Um, we did receive 33 applications. We had three rounds of interviews, um, and um, we're excited about this opportunity to have her join us. Wonderful. And Mike, too. So. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Wait till the vote. Wait till the vote. So. <laughs> Were there any questions for Mr. Charles about this appointment? No? Okay. Um, well, I want to, uh, well, first let's go to a motion in a second. I move to appoint Lori Parmenter as East Grand Rapids City Clerk, effective July 8, 2022. Second. Okay. okay. And I just want to welcome you. Thank you so much. I look forward to getting to know you. Um, you have big shoes to fill, but I think it's, I like the, that you're going to be working together for a time before Karen leaves because uh, she's been 28 years is a lot of knowledge to pass on. <laughs> we, we should probably vote before yeah, you see right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, we first. need to vote first. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about July 4th again. Yeah. <laughs> welcome and welcome, Mike. Thank you to our community. It's wonderful to have you here. So, are there any other comments or? Okay, let's go to a vote. All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Welcome. Welcome. So next is the a, a consent agenda items. May I please have a motion and a second to approve tonight's <coughs> consent agenda items? Move to approve tonight's consent agenda items as presented. Second. Wonderful. All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. So now we move on to a special meeting tonight for the resolution adopting the fiscal year 2022 2023 budget and setting a millage rate for fiscal year 22-23. And that is introduction by Ms. Seath. Thank you. As uh, Senior Manager Shea said, or Charles said earlier, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Shea. Mr. Shea, Charles. That guy up there. So. Uh, we spoke of the millage rates um, uh, being 11.524. 
and a total budget in um, expenditures of thirteen million for the general thirteen million five hundred and fifty five thousand seven hundred and ten dollars for the general fund. The resolution shows all of the other other funds that we are asking you to approve as part of this budget <coughs> special budget meeting. And we've gone over all of the details and haven't had any more questions uh, in regards to that. So we're asking you to move forward with the current dollar rates as set for the general fund, the street fund, and the two debt funds. And then approve the budget resolution as stated. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions for Ms. Heath? No? Okay. So given that, I will ask for a motion and a second for this agenda item. Move to approve the attached resolution to approve the 2022-2023 budget and set the millage rates as presented in the resolution. Second. Is there any further discussion? Just okay. some appreciation for city staff putting this all together and the Definitely. conversations that surrounded the budget process this year. Yes. Yeah, I'll second that as well. Definitely. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Thank you. Mr. Shea. Mr. Shea. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to talk to you tomorrow. So. <laughs> okay. So uh, we will move to a vote. All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. So now we will be going into executive session and um, we will not be coming back to chambers this evening. So do I adjourn? No, so uh, we need a uh, motion, call vote. Uh, motion to enter exist and yeah, enter Executive closed session and uh, and to discuss vote. attorney client communication on a roll call vote. Okay. Maybe motion. Motion to go into closed session to <clears throat> discuss the attorney client privilege vote. Perfect. On a roll call vote. Roll call vote. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Second. <clears throat> All right. Commissioner Pacwa. Yes. Mayor Favalli. Yes. Commissioner Schwartz. Yes. Oh, am I missing? Commissioner Wesley. Yes. Commissioner Hamrick. Yes. And Commissioner Arnsworth. Yes. Okay. Motion carries. So do we adjourn? We do. So, we, so we will not be coming back. Um, so we will have to come back to adjourn the meeting, but, uh, but, okay. but there will be no action afterwards. Right. Okay. So, okay. Last time we sat out here. Would you like to sit out here? No. Okay. <laughs> we won't. Is chairs are comfy? No. Okay. Dogs run by or up for runs, whatever. Oh, I do. I do. People get screwed.